<laughs> there. Uh, Pat Sanson, we've got him with us here on the Uncharted Podcast. Josh and Sam, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, guitarist of Wilco, amongst uh, many other talents. Uh, got a photography collection coming to Muscle Shoals at the Rocker Gallery, January 21st, their first exhibit. Uh, can you just give us a little more detail about it? We're super excited to have your works here. I saw them on your websites and everything. Just phenomenal stuff. Oh, thank you. Well, um, yeah, Alan was kind enough to invite me to be the the uh, the first exhibitor in his new gallery that he's opening, uh, the Rocker Gallery down in downtown Sheffield. And um, yeah, he had seen, I guess he had seen some of my work, uh, well, online. And uh, he had also seen some of my prints uh, at our friend uh, Savannah Yarbrough's uh, shop in in LA called mm -hmm. uh, Savas. It's beautiful, a beautiful boutique there, and um, and she was showing some of my work in her in her store in Hollywood uh, last year, and he saw that work there and uh, and ran into him uh, sometime earlier this year, and he told me about this project that he was doing that he was opening this gallery. Yeah, and uh, asked me if I wanted to show some work there, and I said sure. Yeah, I really enjoy it, and I saw somebody described it as uh, your work as uh, like a road trip uh, we might not have taken. So my <laughs> question leading into that is like, like when you're on tour and everything, I know you know you can see the regular stuff, but do you like deliberately sort out like off the beaten path stuff that people wouldn't normally take a second glance at? I mean, I think that's what happens. Yeah, it's it's um, and it's not really it's not so much a a, a a conscious effort to do, you know, to to look for the things that nobody else sees. But I I just personally like to get into a mode where I'm by myself. I'm just kind of wandering aimlessly and exploring and just kind of letting my eye go where it goes without a whole lot of without a whole lot of judgment about it or a whole lot of um a uh, conscious uh, you know sort of like direction i kind of like to get into a state of a state a creative state of mind where i'm just sort of letting letting it happen let my eye go wherever it wants to go and you know i certainly see patterns in like the kinds of things that i end up shooting and obviously I'm drawn to certain things and, 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 you know, I, I think at this point I've sort of learned things about what I like to see in photographs and like how certain things will look in photographs. It's, um, it's kind of like a, uh, in a way I, it's kind of like going on a little treasure hunt, you know, with my cameras some days I don't really take many pictures and some days, you know, if the light is amazing and I just happen to be in a place where there's lots of things that I find photogenic, then I'll, you know, end up shooting hundreds of hundreds of uh, shots. You just never know. And I shoot on film and, and that that's a big part of it is the fact that it's film that I'm using and, and it's uh, a, a bit, a little bit slower process than shooting digital um film reacts to light in a certain way and it kind of puts me in a certain state of mind when I'm shooting film because I I don't you know I can't look at a screen and see what I've just yeah. shot and edit it on the fly yeah. and delete it if I don't like it I just kind of have to give myself over to the fact that I'm not going to see this image that I'm shooting for maybe weeks you know until I get it back from the lab so there's something nice about that too it's kind of like a uh, it's almost kind of like meditation for me, you know, slowing down, letting go of some control and, um, and, and just allowing myself to be surprised, you know, by things. Yeah. Um, that brought up, you were talking about getting developed. I wasn't even aware, you know, cause I, I appreciate photography. I, I'm, I'm kind of oblivious to it, but I didn't realize they were still developing. My next thing was going to be like, do you do it yourself? Like in the little room and, and all the water and the lights and whatnot. No, I, I leave it. I leave that to the pros. Yeah. We I have a great lab here in Nashville uh, oh, really? called Boutique Film Lab that, um, wow. 
they just celebrated their 10th anniversary. It's some serious film lovers here, and we're so lucky to have them because they do great work. They love, they're very passionate about film. So when I started shooting film again in 2019 or so, uh, I was just really lucky that I was able to, to get in contact with them, and they've been super supportive of, you know, of my work, so... That's awesome. And it all looks great. So they do it. They do a bang up job. I mean, it's really. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a real passion of mine. It's something that I started doing. Um, I, I put out a book in 2010 uh, of photographs that I made with a Polaroid camera called the SX 70. And that was when uh, Polaroid was still making film and they started making film again, but they stopped for about 10 years uh, but that's when, before they stopped making film in the, the late 2000s. And I was shooting for about five years, just really obsessively. I just, I found this Polaroid camera, started taking pictures with it. I just loved it. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't, never studied photography uh, formally. Uh, I just really connected to this camera. And it was great for me because I was tra traveling a lot, touring a lot. Wilco was uh, that those were really intense uh, touring years for Wilco. Sure. So I was on the road all the time and I had a lot of free time, a lot of time to fill. So it was kind of perfect. You know, I, I was able to take this little Polaroid camera with me on the road. I didn't have to take a lot of equipment, just this little machine. And you could go to pretty much any CVS or Walgreens or Walmart and get film at that time. Yeah. It's hard to uh, believe so now, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It, when it was a sort of, so it was kind of a perfect combination. It gave me, it gave me for those like five years or so, something to really um, put my focus on in my free time, you know, on tour instead of just hanging, you know, hanging around aimlessly. You know, gave me a, gave me a sort of a mission. Sure, uh, and you brought up that book. That was going to be one of my questions, and I, I saw where it sold out again on your website. So, are you like in your third or fourth edition of it now, or what's the story with that? No, it's just, it's just, I did, I've done two printings of it, and um, I'm actually working on a new book. So, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to do another printing of the Polaroid book. Maybe one day, but um, right now I'm sort of focusing that uh, energy on uh, putting a new book together of of work that I've done in the last few years, yeah. um, which is more like 35 millimeter and uh, medium format film, but it's it's still all, all film. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we, uh, Josh and I were looking at the pictures and we noticed from 2020, they were pretty cool and interesting. And just wondering if COVID, the whole COVID thing had anything with that period of those photos. Definitely, oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I mean, it was, um, you know, I don't, uh, you know, they're not specifically about lockdown or about COVID. You know, it, it wasn't, I wasn't necessarily specifically trying to make a document of what life is like during lockdown, but, um, but it, but that tone mm -hmm. definitely is in there. Um, a lot of it is just because everything was so empty. You know, everything was so empty and so quiet in this, you know, in 2020, um, that uh, it just lent itself to the kind of photography that I that I do. And and another part of that was that um, I, I really I hadn't been taking photographs after making the Polaroid book. I hadn't taken been doing film photography for maybe eight years or something i was still taking thousands of photos with my right phone and and, know, and i was starting to collect photography books and starting to learn more about photographers because when i was doing the polaroid work i really was pretty naive about about photographer you know about the history of art photography i was just doing it because i dug it you know sure it's just yeah for fun a release and i yeah and it just brought me a lot of you know, joy. So when, when the, um, after I put my book out, I kind of started to look a little more seriously at other, at, at past photographers. And I was, and I kind of got my mind blown. It's like, oh my God, there's this whole 
world, this whole history that I don't really know that much about. So I started kind of put the cameras down for a bit and started looking at work, like started started uh, collecting photography books and figuring out who my people, you know, who my some of my favorites are and learning about 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 photographers. And then I came back to I, I got the bug to start shooting again right around the end of 2019. And I just, I bought a couple of new cameras and just, I had this feeling that I wanted to start making photography again. Uh, and just as I kind of started doing that, then COVID happened. Yeah. And, you know, Wilco gets pulled off the road. Everything's so uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. Everything is, you know, you guys remember, it was like such a weird time. Yeah. The other part of it was that my dad had, had a stroke at the end of 2019 right around christmas yeah and uh and when that happened i f found myself driving a lot going driving down to mississippi where he was living uh where he was in the hospital when he first had the stroke and um and then also when he ended up moving to Atlanta. So I was driving a lot between Nashville and Atlanta just to, to help the family and, and hang, you know, yeah. and help him. And so for pretty much all of 2020 into like kind of up until Wilco started touring again in 2021, I was driving back and forth between Nashville and Atlanta every other week. <laughs> and what I did was I decided to use that time as as uh, a creative part of my creative process too. So I would take my cameras. I always had my cameras with me and I would take the back roads, you know, um, usually coming back, uh, you know, I would just kind of find a new weird way to come back because I didn't have to be back, you know, in time for anything since we weren't working. So I just had all this free time and I could just wander like in these, uh, you know, in these, you know, find myself in these little towns in Tennessee and Georgia and Mississippi. Yeah. You, uh, so you it gave, it, yeah. It just gave me a lot of, uh, it gave me a, a, a lot of, of uh, material to draw from. Okay. So a lot of that work from, uh, from 2020 and a lot, like pretty much all the work that's going to be up at Alan's place is stuff from that time period. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Great. Um, yeah, we uh, we saw where um you also you did a lot in our our home hometown. Well, it was my former hometown, Columbia, Tennessee. I saw you oh. your Dixie Motors right across the bridge there, which has been there you know forever. The same owner from like the sixties or fifties, and a couple other places. So I thought that was really awesome. You took the time to do that. Um, yeah. Well, I yeah I drove I would drive I drove over to Columbia a bunch of times. Um, to shoot and just kind of wander around and uh there's actually a, a photograph that's gonna be in the show from a place called it's called sue's alterations i don't know if you know sue's <laughs> yeah, yeah alteration good. yeah but it's a it's there's these two dresses you know these two mannequins dresses that are in the window and yeah and i just i just caught it like right at the end of the day one day and the light was hitting it in this way that just it looked like a painting to me awesome cool yeah, yeah, right there at the end of the square, right uh, downtown. Is that where you saw it? You know, I, yeah, I, I can't really tell you. It's kind of like I feel like it's kind of like on the way out of town. Like, uh, I wish I could tell you exactly where it is. But last time I was there, which was about a year after I took that photograph, those dresses were still in the window exactly as they were. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, waiting somebody yeah. to pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool that um, just the driving around. You said like just looking for places is part of the uh, artist experiment, you know, just trying to find a new places and see what happens. And, you know, and that's part yeah. of the, the yeah, it's, finding just, of it. Yeah. yeah. Just, just the, just the kind of like being, you know, and I, I, I really do feel like the, the, the process and the kind of like the state of mind that I can sometimes get into when I'm out uh, shooting and what, and in the, in that space, is just as important yeah. as the final result, if not more, you know, I mean, getting, you know, 
weeks later when I get the film scans back and I see the results of what I was shooting, uh, that's just extra, you know, it's like the, the doing of it is just such a good, you know, I think is a valuable thing. And I just enjoy that state of mind that I get into. It's kind of like, you know, you know, it's kind of like when you're, you know, if you want to sort of think about it in musical terms, it's like when you're when you're jamming with people, and you don't necessarily, you know, you don't you don't yep. you might be playing yep. on, on a familiar riff, but you might just be kind of letting whatever happens happens, you know, and you kind of get into that sort of state of mind where you're not really really thinking about the purpose of what you're doing. You're just doing it, you know. Yeah. And, and that's there's a capturing the present yeah exactly. exactly when you when you said that it made me think um uh and muscle show sound here when traffic with steve winwood came here to record the way you mentioned that describes how they described them he said they were one of the bands that would get in the studio unprepared which worked for them because you know they're renowned but they would just let it take off they they yeah. didn't come in with a set thing i, I find that fascinating and also, if you can capture that kind of art the way you do and the way I described with them, it just it, it makes it so much more like enjoyable. Like these people, like when they're describing it, like you're on a trip is because that's how you make it feel to the person enjoying the artwork as it goes along. Yeah. Pretty yeah. stuff. We love it. Um, Thank you. We, we appreciate your time. He's got another thought provoking question for you and we'll let you okay. go in the snow pile. That's my, and, favorite, that's my favorite kind of question. Yeah. Well, uh, the smoky day. I love it. It oh, very, thank very you. Cool. So uh, we, you know, as we're listening to it, it made us have, of course, the Beatles vibe. I'm just wondering if that had anything, any kind of inspiration to it. Um, oh, yeah. it just happened to come out that way, or? Well, or, I'm a man. I'm a I'm a Beatle nut. You yeah. know, what I mean, to I me, it me. sounds like you got a hold of a song in a vault that they hadn't recorded. That's what yeah, I thought yeah. when I heard it. Well, I mean, the the well, your your the truth of that the 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 story of that song is that it was it's a cover song by uh of a song that was originally recorded by the zombies right on yeah so uh it, it didn't come out on any zombies albums but they recorded it after they made their uh their album uh odyssey and oracle which came out in 67 uh it's a masterpiece yeah. one of my favorite albums of all times and the zombies are one of my favorite bands of all times yeah Colin Blunstone, the singer, I think has got one of the all-time great voices. So they're, I'm a, I'm a big admirer, deep fan of the Zombies. Um, Colin's, the singer's first solo album came out in 1971. It's called One Year, and that album is definitely in my top ten favorite albums. Nice. One of my biggest musical influences, uh, and. That album came out in 71. Uh, the the keyboardist and bass player from the Zombies produced it with Colin. So they were still involved. Yeah. You know, they were still musical partners. Um, and um, yeah, I've just always loved it. And the song that that the song Smoky Day is on that album. I got to tour with the Zombies in 2014 as their uh, opening act. Amazing. How cool is that? It was really, I mean, a thrill for me. Oh, you know, sure. I'm yeah. such a fan. I had met them once before because the Autumn Defense, my band with John Stewart, um, the two of us had opened for the Zombies about 10 years before when they first started touring. <laughs> so we had met them because uh, we're both big fans. And so in 2014, I uh, did about a two week tour with them as their opening act, did about 10, 10 gigs, got to know them a bit. And, and, you know, and it was just a really lovely experience. And um, so cut to, to 2021. Uh, it's the, it's the 50th anniversary of that album one year. Oh, wow. And there is a tribute show being planned in Los Angeles um, with Colin performing the whole album with a string section because most of the album is just his voice and strings, incredible string arrangements. Nice. 
And so they were going to have a string section and it was going to be Colin and then some guests were going to come and, you know, be part of the, the band. And when I found out about it, I, I called their man, called their manager and just said, I gotta be a part of this. Yeah, sure. Because it's one of my, one of my biggest dreams is to sing the song Smoky Day with Colin because the song has a parallel harmony all the way through the song. It's, yeah. it's him singing with himself in harmony all the way through the song. It's just magical. And I told him this when I toured with him in 2014, that I was like, one day I want to sing Smoky Day with you somehow. And I even tried to get Colin to perform this album with a string section at one of Wilco's festivals a few years ago. Uh, and it was in motion, but we couldn't, we, we couldn't make it happen. The scheduling didn't work out. I think there was some, you know, there, it just, it couldn't happen then. So, but so this had been on my mind. So when the, when this uh, anniversary show came up, I, you know, put myself forward and said, I really got to do this. And we worked it out and, and it was, it was going to happen. It was going to be at the end of 2021. Well, again, COVID had an upsurge at the end of 2021. Yeah, perfect timing on that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember, yeah. Uh, remember which strain that was, but but the show got canceled, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. But um, I had done a demo or just like a practice version of the song here, right here on this Wurlitzer, um, to just to kind of get familiar with the harmony I was going to sing with them and also to send to the musical director to say, Hey, here's me singing the harmony. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> just so, just so they, you know, know what to expect. Well, your arrangement is very well done. I mean, it's well, like, thank you. It, it, it sounds like you sat in a room with Brian Wilson and Paul McCartney and you all <laughs> kind of got together. Uh, since you brought the zombies, uh, the time of the season, did you ever get to do the, do do do. Yeah, you, oh, yeah. you know how I, you know like the cowbell for Grim Reaper. Yeah, I would think that uh would be like your your highlight with him. <laughs> actually, I just actually it's funny you ask that because I just performed that song. I, I'd never performed that song, but I just performed it last weekend here in Nashville uh at the at the third man uh blue room. Oh rock and roll. Yeah. Some friends of mine that my friend Reno that does a, a has a cool band called the Berlinettas that does all 60s cool like 60s covers so we, we worked that up but but yeah that's how Smoky Day came about you know I just took that demo that I did in here on the Whirly and my my vocal yeah. and it had been sitting around and I just thought you know what I'm gonna like add some strings to this and add a couple more vocal parts and just you know see what mm -hmm. happens and then we we were in Iceland last year and the the landscape was so beautiful there that that I just thought it would be perfect for a, a video. So it just kind of naturally came yeah. about, and I'm I'm really proud of it. I, sure, I would be too. It's well done. It, it it's a uh, you know it, it takes you on a journey. But like I said, as men, I heard I was like, this makes me feel like I'm listening to a song that was supposed to be on Rubber Soul that just didn't you know they just <laughs> shelved it for a while. <laughs> well, but, it's well that's a it's a classic album, and if you dig if you dig that vibe definitely check out Colin's album one year it is it's a true masterpiece yeah I'm already I was already shuffling through iTunes to 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 dig into it but um anyway hey thank you so much for your time and and, and to, yeah. you know the, it was a pleasure speaking with you and we're looking forward to seeing your your works up close and personal and um if you ever come to the shows and play a show uh let, let's get together and jam one out he's a guitar and, and I pretend to play drums so awesome <laughs> <laughs> well well, you're you're in the right place to to make some music. Like the Shoals has like got such a such a musical such a musical legacy and what a great vibe down there. And every time you turn around, it's like, oh, this guy played with them. And you know, we met Ronnie Eads the other day. He's played with everybody. And it's just every time you turn, there's somebody that's like makes me feel like I'm trying to go from elementary T ball to the the major <laughs> leagues. You know, it's like Oh, you know, you heard this song by, you know, the Guess Who? Well, he played on it, and then he played with it. <laughs> turned around and with Stevie Ray Vaughan, it's like, okay, that's a lot going yeah. on. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like it's like living in Nashville, you know? It's like, it's just, you know, it's, there's inspiration everywhere, so. 
There is. Every time I think I'm good, I just go sit in a room somewhere in here. <laughs> All right. Well, have a you have a good one. We appreciate your time, and uh, we'll get this uh, edited, and then we'll send it to you and do with it as you please. Great. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah, we'll see you soon. See you, Pat. All right. See you this weekend. Hi, right, brother. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But don't no, sound too bad. <laughs>